You don't need a luxury kitchen to prepare gourmet meals. My name is Dennis. I live in a mobile home in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. I want to experiment today with cake. I like the idea of making cake because it's real chemistry, more so than, say, roasting a leg of lamb. I mean, there's some chemistry, I suppose, in the cooking of lamb, but baking is real chemistry because you have to assemble this formula of ingredients that has to interact and to give you the results that you want. So there's more chemistry involved. I'm not real interested in eating cake because most of the time when you get cake, what do you get? You get this slice of cake with a equally thick layer of sugary frosting on top that you have to scrape off to get down to the good stuff. I'm attracted to this recipe because it doesn't use frosting. You make a chocolate glaze to go over the top. So it has this thin coating on it. It's a triple chocolate cake. It's actually a pound cake as well. It has three different kinds of chocolate in it. It uses cocoa powder, chocolate syrup, and semi-sweet dark chocolate. So it should be, I mean, for those of you who love chocolate, this might be just the cake for you. So let's get into making our chocolate cake today. For this recipe, you're gonna need a bunt pan. When Nordicware released their anniversary original 15 cup bunt pan, I bought one. It's got a non-stick coating on it already, but I'm gonna butter it. The recipe says to butter the pan, which can be a little bit tricky because you have to get the butter into all these grooves. This again is a 15 cup. You're gonna need at least a 14 cup bunt pan according to this recipe. In a medium bowl, combine two and a quarter cups. That's about 12 ounces by weight, 340 grams of all purpose flour one quarter cup, 20 grams of unsweetened cocoa powder, one half teaspoon of salt. I'm just gonna give this a good pinch of salt. One half teaspoon of baking soda, and then one quarter teaspoon of baking powder. You use both because baking soda doesn't contain any acid and there needs to be acid in the mix for this to work with. The baking powder will provide some acid. I'm going to be adding buttermilk to this later on. That'll also provide something for the baking powder to work with. And then you want to just combine this well with a whisk. Next, in a large bowl, I want to cream together one cup, which is two sticks, eight ounces, 227 grams of unsalted butter. You can use salted if you know that the butter you work with is not overly salty. I bought some Irish butter a while back to experiment with it, and it was really salty. But normally the butter I buy is fine. I'm using unsalted butter because I had this, I kind of bought it to experiment with it. It was very expensive. Three sticks cost me $12. It's an Italian butter. I just bought it for an experiment. I would never buy it again. But once in a while I like to experiment with something new. So that's eight ounces, 227 grams of unsalted butter, and then two cups, 400 grams of sugar. And then I wanna cream these together. Obviously this butter is at room temperature. I took it out of the refrigerator last night to make sure it would be soft enough for me to work with today. And you just wanna work those together until they're combined and smooth. You could do this with a electric beater if you want. But when the butter is room temperature like this, it's very easy to work with. You don't need a machine to do it. 
Next, what I need to do is I need to beat this butter sugar mixture until it's light and fluffy, about two to three minutes. I don't have one of those electric handheld mixers. I have a big stand mixer over there, but I don't buy a hand mixer because <laughs> I have an electric drill. It works, you know, it works perfectly well. Why spend the money on a hand mixer when I already have one. This thing here, the beater, I bought this for 10 cents in a thrift store. This works fine. It's weird, I know. It's a guy thing, but it works. So I set a timer for three minutes. I'm going to beat this on medium high during that whole time. So now there is my butter and sugar mixture, white and fluffy. I beat that for three minutes. I next want to add two teaspoons of vanilla extract and four large eggs, one at a time. Now what a large egg is here in the USA, they range between 1.9 and two ounces each. I figured two ounces each, about 55 grams. Someone from another country, I wanna say it was England, said that over there a 55 gram egg in the shell, weighed in the shell, is a medium egg. So I like to give the weight so you can adjust accordingly here, two ounces in this shell or 55 grams is considered a large egg. So my vanilla goes in and then one of my eggs. And you want to beat these in one at a time until they're combined, until all four eggs are combined. So there is my mixture now with all four eggs combined and my vanilla light and fluffy. Next I need to melt some chocolate. I've heated a little bit of water, I don't know, maybe a cup or so in a small pan, heated that up to boiling. And what I have here is eight ounces of semi-sweet chocolate, that's 227 grams. And I'm gonna hold this pan over the boiling water to warm it up. I'm going to use that to melt my chocolate. Sometimes you have to be really careful when melting chocolate because if you overheat it, you can damage it. By heating the pan over boiling water, you've got a more gentle heat working under the inner pan and that'll protect the chocolate from overheating. My chocolate is thoroughly melted now, so I want to start beating this in. I'm going to scrape this pan to get the last of this out and into my bowl. I mean, this is semi-sweet dark chocolate. I don't want to waste any of this. Okay, beat that all together. And now what I have here is one cup, 237 milliliters if you measure it by liquid or 300 grams if you measure it by weight of chocolate syrup. I want to work that in. This now completes our triple chocolate. We have cocoa powder in there, semi-sweet chocolate, and now chocolate syrup. I have here one cup, 237 milliliters of buttermilk, and I have my flour mixture. I want to add my flour mixture in three portions, my buttermilk in two, flour, then buttermilk, flour, buttermilk, and then finish up with flour mixture. I am in the meantime heating my oven up to 325 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 163 degrees Celsius and you want to mix this at low speed. So I changed my drills speed to low. And I'm going to put roughly a third of that flour in there and combine it. Get my buttermilk ready to go in. So my first addition of flour is in. I'm going to add about roughly half a cup of my buttermilk and combine that and continue with more flour, the last of the buttermilk and then the last of the flour. Before you're done, give your bowl one scrape down with a spatula 
and then mix again. The instructions say not to over mix and I'm guessing that the reason why is because you've got flour in there you don't want to start hooking up proteins and form gluten chains. You want to get a cake not a bread. So now I'm going to transfer this if I can hold this bowl without dropping it. Transfer this to my prepared bunt pan. I think this is why you need a large bunt pan, 14 cups minimum, because I've got a lot of batter here. I've transferred all my batter into my bunt pan here. I'm just kind of moving this around a little bit to make sure that it's evenly distributed. Baking time. You want to bake this till the usual toothpick inserted into a center portion comes out clean. I always use a digital thermometer. When a digital thermometer registers 200 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 93 degrees centigrade, I know that it's done. The original recipe says 60 to 75 minutes total bake time. I'll start checking it, checking the temperature after one hour. Here is my cake out of the oven. You can see how much that filled a 15 cup bunt pan. The original recipe called for a 14 cup. I'm going to say 15 cup when I write it up. The internal temperature on this is 207, 208 degrees. That's perfect. I want it above 200 degrees. I left it in the oven for the full 75 minutes because after an hour the temperature was was like below 190. It was still too low. So now I need to let this cool in the pan for about 30 minutes and then I'm going to trim off some of this top edge to sort of smooth that out as much as possible. Flip it over and then take it out of the pan and let it cool thoroughly on this rack. My cake has been cooling now for 30 minutes and I have to say it subsided quite a bit. Hopefully that hasn't fallen. It's not flat but it did recede down into that pan at least an inch. So what I'm going to do now is to take this off, put this on top, invert this on top, and there goes the cake. I can feel that it's dropped out. <laughs> okay, look at that. Tell me that isn't beautiful. That is a beautiful bit of cake. So now I have to wait for this to cool thoroughly and then I can make my chocolate glaze to go over the top. My cake now is nearly cool. I'm going to start chopping up some chocolate here because I'm going to be using this for making the glaze and between all the waiting it's going to be nearly 45 minutes so by then the cake should be completely cool. In the meantime I'm heating chocolate, I'm heating heavy cream rather, which is one half cup 118 milliliters. I'm heating that on the stove and this is four ounces, 113 grams of semi-sweet chocolate. So as soon as my heavy cream just comes to the boil, I'll add the chocolate to it. My cream now has just come up to the boil, so I've taken the heat off. I'm going to add my chocolate to that and let that sit now for about five minutes. You don't have to do anything with it, just let it sit and let the chocolate melt. My chocolate now has been sitting in my hot cream for five minutes. I'm going to whisk this. I can use my little battery operated whisk for this since I don't need a lot of, I don't need a powerful motor. I 
I want to just scrape this pan down one time because there is a little bit of chocolate in the bottom. Make sure that I get that all into my syrup. And then finish this up. I am satisfied. Now, I'm going to let that sit for 15, 10 to 15 minutes. Let it cool down quite a bit. Let it thicken. And that will be ready to drizzle over my cake. My sauce now has thickened a little bit. There are two ways you can do this. <clears throat> you can leave the cake on a rack, drizzle the glaze over the top and let it run down through and fall through the rack onto the baking sheet below. And then you can put it onto a clean plate and keep the plate looking fairly clean. I've seen a lot of pictures where they put the cake on a plate and then drizzle the glaze over it so the glaze pools a little bit onto the plate. You can do whichever works best for you. I'm going to go directly onto a plate. Now obviously you don't need to cover every square inch of the cake but enough so that it's drizzling down the sides and giving you a nice appearance. <laughs> oh that is looking so good. A little bit more right there. And I think that's it. All right, I'm going to clean up the edge of my plate here. This has to sit now for 15 to 20 minutes. No, 20 to 30 minutes to let this completely set up. And then we'll be ready to cut this and see how good it tastes. Okay, let's see if I can cut a slice of this now and plate it without making too much of a gooey mess. Oh gosh, it's got a nice texture to it. Look at that. Doesn't that look fantastic? There it is. Got to see how that tastes. That looks so good. I love it when a baking project comes out so well. I mean, I'm trying to get better at doing cakes. It has a nice, like a pound cake texture to it. Very chocolatey. Mmm. Tender. Ah. That is so good. Okay, excuse me. I'm going to enjoy my triple chocolate pound cake. I have some time left on this video. So I want to show you a trick that I learned from my mom many, many years ago. I grew up in New England. I have a twin brother and when we were little kids, sometimes we would tear around the house. In New England, the weather isn't always good for playing outdoors. And if my mom was making a scratch cake and they tend to fall easily, she would yell at us, don't run around the house. The cake is going to fall. And sometimes the cake would fall and sometimes it wasn't our fault. Well, mom had a way of using up a failed cake so that it wouldn't go to waste. You can also do this with cake that's getting old. It's been in the refrigerator for four or five days. You know what I mean. People go to the refrigerator, they open the door and look inside. Oh, there's nothing good to eat. Well, there's half a cake sitting in there. It's been in there for days. They want leftover pizza. So if you've got cake that's old or if it fails 
and you don't want to toss it out, there's a way of reusing it to make into something new, another dessert. And that's what my mom would do. She would make this cake pudding into a large bowl. I'm going to put three quarters of a cup, that's 62 grams of non-fat dry milk powder, three quarters of a cup of cornstarch. That's most of that out of there. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some sugar in. I got, well, the three quarters of a cup of cornstarch is 108 grams. One cup of granulated sugar. I'm going to move that in there like that to take out the last of that cornstarch. Much cleaner. So the rest of my sugar, that's one cup, 200 grams of sugar. And then three quarters of a cup of cocoa powder. And I'm going to sift this in because cocoa powder really clumps a lot. And I don't want the little lumps in there. Now mix this all up. And then I'm going to add a little bit of salt to this. Did I say how much the cocoa powder was? Three quarters of a cup, 57 grams. And I'm going to put in about a half a teaspoon of salt. There. Mix that all up. And that is a chocolate pudding powdered mix. What I do is store it in a jar. Save the tops off of some of your bottles. Cut them off a plastic bottle. They make great funnels. There you are. How simple is that? So there is a nice jar of chocolate pudding mix. Call it, if you want, instant chocolate pudding mix. It's always available in the cupboard when I need it. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is commit a sacrilege by euthanizing that beautiful triple chocolate pound cake that I made. I know what I'm doing is totally evil because this cake came out so nice I should have given it away. I'm taking off some of this glaze because I don't want it all in my pudding. All right, now I can cut up my cake into pieces. I mean, the damage is done, folks. There's no going back now. I realize what a sacrilege this is to start chopping up my beautiful triple chocolate. pound cake. I've got a large saucepan heating on the stove into which I'm pouring four cups. I'll have to give you the metric equivalent of that in a moment. And then I'm going to add two cups. Uh, no, one one cup of my pudding mix and mix that up. It won't mix in well at first, but as this comes up to a boil and starts to cook, that'll blend in better. And you want to bring this mixture to a boil, reduce the heat down to low, and simmer it for about three minutes stirring constantly. My mixture is just now coming to the boil, so I'm going to turn my heat down to low. And then I'm going to set my timer for three minutes. 
I'm going to stand here the whole time stirring this while this simmers over low heat. And in the meantime, I can give you the metric equivalence of these volumes that I'm using. The four cups of milk I actually used half and half comes in at just under a liter. It's 0 0.95 liter. And then the one cup of the dry chocolate pudding mix weighed five ounces. That's 142 grams. And those of you who are watching TV, if you're wondering why I'm giving metric equivalents, it's because a lot of my videos end up on the internet. My timer just went off, so I turned my heat off. And that's still kind of liquidy, but that's okay. I'm going to let that cool down. Because if it's a little bit wet, it'll soak into that cake, which is good. I'm going to cover this. And I'm going to let this sit for a while until it's had a chance to cool down. One thing I know I'm going to need for this dessert is whipped cream. So I set up my stand mixer here and I have fortunately plenty of heavy cream in the refrigerator. So I'm going to whip up some cream for this dessert. I'm going to put in, I don't know, three or four cups or so of heavy cream in there. Save some for coffee. Bring my machine up. I'm going to whip this at a fairly low, medium, low speed until I start to see it get frothy. And then little by little, I can increase my, my speed. And then I'm going to be adding sugar to this. And I want to whip this to stiff peaks. All right, I just turned my machine off. Let me see what I got here for my whipped cream. That's nice. See, that's nice stiff peaks. That's beautiful whipped cream. That's what I want. My pudding mix now has cooled down quite a bit. It's okay if it develops a skin. Just fold it in. And then you just want to mix all of this together. It's okay if the cake breaks up a little bit. The more crumbly, the better. Ah, this is bringing back memories of childhood already. So what I want to do is take a spoon of this pudding. Like so. I'm going to set this aside and then <clears throat> I have my whipped cream. This has been sitting in the refrigerator. Put a nice dollop of that on top. And that's the dessert we used to have as children. This is memories of childhood. I haven't tasted this in probably 50 years. I'm only 39, but it's been a while. Oh. Oh. That almost brings tears to my eyes. That is just memories of childhood. Mmm. Okay, excuse me. I'm going to go enjoy my cake pudding. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.